Hi, Mario Vano again. I operate amateur radio station AE0GL in Minnesota and enjoy experimenting with QRP radios. In one earlier video, I showed you how to use the FFT functions of a Siglent oscilloscope to measure intermodulation distortion of, of high frequency SSB transmitters. In another, I showed you a way to generate tones for radio testing using a Raspberry Pi. In this video, I'm going to pull these two ideas together and demonstrate their use with a real radio transmitter. I'll be testing an ICOM 7300 on 20 meters. There are several lab test reports out there for this radio, so we can compare our results to them. I've put a link to one in the video description. The one I picked used 700 and 1500 Hz for the test tones. So we'll use those two. The exact frequencies aren't critical, but it's best to use non-integer related tones so audio harmonics don't confuse things. Today I'm using a Pi Zero 2W to run SOX. This model requires a USB to go adapter since the only USB connector it has is the wrong flavor for our audio interface. In my shack, my ICOM 7300 can be configured to drive a transverter by means of a 50 watt 10 decibel attenuator. So I've connected the dummy load and scope probe to that output. You can see the load, T connector, probe, and the BNC cable going off to the big attenuator in the right of this shot. I've connected the 3.5 millimeter output on the USB interface to the 7300's microphone connector using an adapter cable. I built the cable and it has a 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitor in series with the ICOM microphone input. This cable has a transceiver output as well, but we're not using it today. You can see it heading off to the transceiver at the bottom left. I'm running the Pi by means of a VNC remote control program over Wi-Fi. For this video, I installed a fresh copy of the latest Raspbian Bullseye 32-bit version, updated it, and then used the command shown above, sudo apt-get install socks, to install socks. I'm not going to run it again because it's already installed on this rig. I also turned on and configured VNC and increased the terminal font size. Our next task is to get the scope running. I'm going to use a setup based on the one for my video on measuring IMD. I've just given a remote command to load the setup file from a flash drive plugged into the scope. The version I'm loading is similar to the one I used for the IMD video, but it makes a few slight changes to the center frequency, sweep rate, channel settings, and the vertical levels. For this test, I chose 14.2 megahertz, and I adjusted the FFT horizontal and time base for that center frequency and for one kilohertz per division display. I set the FFT vertical reference to 50 dBm.
which is 100 watts at 50 ohms. The probe actually is only going to see one-tenth of that level because of the inline 10 dB attenuator. To make our display read correctly, the channel 1 input needs to have a special probe type set to a custom value. So I define a custom probe with an attenuation of 31.6 to 1. This compensates for the 10 to 1 attenuation of the probe itself and the additional 10 decibels of attenuation of the inline power attenuator. I also turned off FFT averaging to make this video move along a little bit quicker so we wouldn't have to wait for the smoothing to take effect. However, as a result, there'll be a little bit more garbage down at the bottom of the display, but it's below the level we care about. On the ICOM 7300, I set it up to operate on upper sideband at 14.2 megahertz with 100% RF power output, compression turned off, and the mic gain set to zero for now. Back on the Pi, I made sure the volume was set to 100%. and started socks running with the command shown above. This command will generate a one kilohertz tone with an output level 30 decibels below the full output of the USB adapter. Keying up the transmitter, From its front panel, I raised the microphone gain slowly until I could see enough signal, around 10 watts, to let me confirm all of my settings and that the markers had been properly positioned. I did it this way in order to avoid overheating my 50 watt load Once I was satisfied with all these things, I raised the microphone gain until it stopped causing the output to increase. The value at which this occurs for you will vary, but I found it at around 20 on the ICOM's front panel, and it was a level of about almost 49 dBm. I then turned off the transmitter to avoid overheating my attenuator. The level we just set is going to be used as a reference level for all of our measurements. It's considered full output or rated full output for IMD measurement. We will subtract our measured peaks from this value to get the IMD level. So now we're going to go back to the Pi, stop socks, and restart it using the command shown above, which will generate two tones 
at the same time, and they'll be at a level six decibels below the one we set in the earlier tone. This will be the level we use for our two tones for testing. Next, we key the transmitter. Then wait for the levels to settle down a little bit. I then use the run stop button on the oscilloscope. After pushing markers on peaks to freeze the display. This allowed me to turn off the transmitter. We can now examine our readings at our leisure, both on the screen and in the table. As you can see, we've gotten quite comparable values to those from other published tests of this radio. The distortion products are generally minus 40 dB or so below the reference level of 100 watts. If you examine the peaks outside of the USB passband, they all appear to be well below the reference level. This is a very clean transmitter. I hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful as a starting point if you ever need to set up IMD tests of your own radios. If you do, you'll want to do some experimentation to arrive at the exact SOX command details, your microphone connector wiring to keep noise and hum out of it, and your level settings to avoid overloading your microphone input. Hopefully, however, this video will get you started. Thank you for watching, and 73 now from AE0GL.